Buongiorno. We are back today to make a quickie meal. This is um, something I think you're gonna love. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute just to gather around because this is gonna go so fast you might miss it. So hang tight while I get the pasta ready. So today we're gonna make a short, quick dish, short cooking segment. We're gonna chat for a little bit and then hopefully maybe today the sun will come out it's one of those gloomy sticky you know you take a shower and you feel sticky afterwards Ugh. now um i want to tell you really quick about this challenge that uh, a gal i know has a page and she you know does these it's a health and wellness thing she's challenging people to take cold showers and i'm telling you i've been doing this for a long time. I kind of go up and down, I don't always do it, but when I do, I'm telling you, it feels really good. I, I'll tell you my story afterwards. In the meantime, while we're sitting here waiting for that pasta to cook and I tell you what we're gonna make, we're going to grate a little bit of cheese. Because I don't have any grated anyway. And this recipe, you can use extra grated cheese or not. See my nice locatelli? Look, I just took this out a little bit ago and it's already sweating. It's kind of humidity today in New Jersey. All right, that's good enough for now. Perfect. The garbage truck is showing up. Just as I'm, whew, hold on, it's time to wash the The yummy cheese smell off my hand. <laughs> so how are y'all today? You know, I was watching some videos of mine because I was editing some. And then I was watching some videos. It's a truck day. I was watching some videos of some other chefs because I, I like them too and I like to see what they're making and and I like to learn new things and just see other people's techniques. And I was watching this one gal who I've never really watched before, no names. And the whole time she's like, got this big smile on her face and I'm wondering how she could keep talking. I am, I am a smiley, lovely kind of person, but I can't smile the whole time I'm talking all the time. It's just, I don't know, man, it just, you know, sometimes when you're talking normal, even if it's a happy conversation, you smile, you talk. Sometimes you're talking through a smile, but you're not always smiling through every talk. So I apologize ahead of time if I'm not smiling like 100% of the time, because apparently that's what you're supposed to do. And as I started watching like newscasters and, and anybody doing interviews on TV, they're sitting here with this really big smile on and I don't know how they can really talk. <laughs> So anyway, it makes me laugh, which makes me smile, which I guess I'm smiling, but this is real. So if I'm smiling, I mean it. And if I'm not smiling, it's not that I'm not happy. It's just that I'm not smiling. I'm going to check my pasta. So today we're making pasta with ricotta or pasta con la ricotta in Italian or pasta con ricotta in dialect, which would cover most of Southern Italy because that's more or less Napolitan, Pugliese, Calabrese, pasta garagot. It's con la kind of smushed together and they say ca. <laughs> non lo so perché, I don't know why. No, it's just, it's the way we do it. It's like, I am not, I ain't. Anyway, now that's slang. Slang is different than dialect, but anyway. So pasta made with ricotta is kind of like to Italians what mac and cheese is to Americans. To me, this is peasant food at its best because ricotta is quick, easy. Like if you're making a ricotta from scratch, it's quick and easy, it's inexpensive, and then you're still making cheese out of the rest. This is just the first scoop of the cheese making process. So it's an easy stuff, even if you're making it from scratch, scratch making your own ricotta, which we will one day, don't worry. Um, but it is very simple. You can make it in five minutes and it just has this it's a different, it's not the same kind of creamy as your mac and cheese. It's all processed and all that stuff that melts and is 
creamy. This is a different kind of, I can't explain it. It's just good, you gotta try it sometime. All right, so we're gonna start. There's multiple ways to do this and I'm gonna show you, I guess the best way first. And then I'll show you the quickie, quickie way or I'll tell you about the quickie way. So I'm just gonna put this on low. So I don't wanna take it too, too hot. I've got one pound of linguine in the water right now. It's just about done. This is a really good way to make, you can do a linguine because it coats the strands and the flat strands are even better than the, well, it coats the round strands too, but anyway. Um, I like it with farfalle, which is the, the bow ties. It's also really good with like the little shells. And it's also good, like, I'm gonna show you. This is, uh, you can't see it, but these are called um, farfalline, which are little butterflies or teeny weeny bow ties. They're about, you know, the width of your finger. They're so good. It's great with pastina, the little acini di pepe, the little pepper corn ones they call them, or, um, or like the orzo. Any of the little pastas, you can take spaghetti and break it up into one inch pieces and do it. This is good really with any pasta. It's a good because it, it it's a good it's a very good on a on a stringy on a long pasta because it coats it but it's also good in a pasta that cups it and and holds it in like a shell or orecchiette or cavatelli that has nooks and crannies and it gets in there so it's really yummy so we're gonna start with putting some ricotta in the pan. That's about, about two cups. This is probably more than is needed. Let me check the pasta. Okay, so I've got the pasta. I've got a cup full of the pasta water. We're just gonna warm this up. Now, when you do this kind of a, we're gonna put a little pasta water in there to thin it out a little bit. We want this to be a sauce. We don't want it to be gloppy. And ricotta will dry out very quickly. So when you make something like a pasta with ricotta, ricotta is not really salty by itself. So my pasta is salted a little bit extra. So instead of like one tablespoon in the water, I put like almost two. And you want extra salty on the pasta because you don't wanna, if you put salt, I mean, now I'm not gonna tell you a lie. <laughs> I tell you no lie. Um, I have added salt after the fact, but the reality is if you add salt after the fact, it dries it out more afterwards. You want it to be salty and to soak it all in. And there was salt in the salt water, which I added to here anyway, but it's already kind of dissolved in and it was just a little bit. So all you do is just complete, look at this, look how creamy. It also depends on what brand of ricotta you get. Some are creamier than others. And you know what? Don't ask me about brands. I get what's available. Um, this time, this is actually half Trader Joe's because I had a little teeny bit left. And at one point, that's all I could get. Um, so I had a little teeny bit left of that. And it's pretty good. And then I had some Galbani, which is a brand some a lot of people like. And then, of course, I've run across people that don't like it. So it's just up to you. When I'm not making it myself and when I'm not buying the fresh in the tin, I get what I can get. And a couple weeks ago, I got a couple containers of this. And all of a sudden, I realized, I'm like, I've got two containers that I got in here I haven't used. So I've got to use them. If it's too thick, you can also add a little bit of milk. I kind of save that for after the fact, just in case. Um, I don't want to water it down too much with the, with the pasta water. But I do want to do that initially. All right. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Now, really quickly, you can do this just like this, okay? Boom. Use my nice spatula in my nice non-stick terra cucina pan. Actually, it's a nice pampered chef spatula. It's nice because it's got a, um, it's like a scoopy. Okay, I'm just gonna get this all oh gosh this is whoop, so actually you know what works better with the tongs there we go a 
Oh, what a mess I made on the bowl, huh? That's what's nice about a spatula. You can kind of clean it up a little. Now, you saw me grating cheese at the very beginning. If this isn't um, cheesy enough for you, hold on. Mm. Look at that. This is how they do it on TV they, and in restaurants. They twist it up and then, you know what you do next? Then you get some of this Bella nice and nice of parsley. Oops, <laughs> gonna cook the parsley. And you chop it up. This is if you're having peasant food and you're having company over. Or you wanna pretend that you're not a peasant. You put a little bit of a pretzemolo on top there and then you sprinkle a little teeny bit of and that's how you make it look fancy when this is the simplest of peasant dishes that there is how you like them apples you can also melt some of the cheese in with the ricotta but I'm gonna tell you right now the first time you make it make it with plain ricotta it's ricotta the salted water and your pasta and I'm telling you you're gonna love it it's so simple so good but you want to kick it up a notch you want it to be a little more pungent add a little now of course mine is pecorino romano which is always my favorite you can use a good parmigiano you can use a grano padano any grated cheese you like or you happen to have um and you know the parsley just makes it look pretty I just have this thing with parsley I don't know we didn't really I mean my grandmother used parsley in everything and at our restaurant we sprinkled my the chef I learned from sprinkled parsley on everything so I kind of had it from coming from two sides the home side and the work side and that was that but believe it or not that is like a you know by the time the water's done your sauce was done five minutes ago like the sauce is the, the you know it just takes two minutes to put it together when you're done so now I'm going to really quick, let's see, get myself a glass of water and we're going to go sit down because we're done already. I can't wait for you guys to try the pasta with ricotta. Um, if you're watching today, please, you know, give me a hello, a thumbs up, a chow, a, you know, whatever. Um, but it's uh, like, I like to know who's there. All right. Wait, hold on. Okay, before I do anything else today, I have to, God, I should save it to the end because I'm going to cry. Ah, hell with it. As I've said before, I just love doing this little show and I love you guys who have been so responsive, look at me, I'm already going, who have been so responsive to me and so supportive and so just being there and telling me wonderful things. And yesterday, I get a package in the mail from somebody I have never met before. Check this out. It's Darina's Kitchen. Okay, I'm covering my face. So Darina's Kitchen Towel with my re two of my recipes from my website on here. And one of them has my picture. One of them has my cake. It's got my Italian lemon ricotta cake and my, my Italian orange cake, my torta la rancha. And... I, so I'm getting goosebumps talking about it right now, so I'm going to say thank you in front of everybody to Christine, who is one of you guys, somebody who just follows my page, sent me the nicest note that I swear I love this towel, but the note was just so nice. And this is why I do it. You guys are the reason I do this, and I thank you so, so much for allowing me to come into your life, come into your house, and be part of your life um i'm real i'm just a mom um who likes to cook and who wants to share it with the world and in my way i want to try to make the world a better place i want to encourage people to get back to the table and to live together following what i call the well i don't call it, i didn't make it up but 
reviving the Roseto effect, which is coming together, eating together. It's not, it is what we eat to a certain extent, but it's more important how we eat together. Share the love with the food, but show the love across the table. And for me being able to come to you and show you this and let you be part of my life and, and you letting me be part of mine, you know, or wait a minute, you letting me be part of yours. <laughs> See, I can't even talk straight. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, Christine, you're the best. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm just, my husband said, are you going to show the towel today? And I said, absolutely. He goes, don't cry. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> nice try there. Hold on. I'm not going to use that towel to dry my face, but I have to. <laughs> oh, okay. Do I, am I, am I smeared? <laughs> Let's put the glasses back on. They hide a little bit. Anyway. Um, so I just want to thank you. And I think that's representative of some of the nice messages I've been getting. Um, so God, thank you guys so much. So, okay, got that out of the way. <laughs> um, but that was really important for me to, um, to share because that just, I sat, I was actually, I was on the phone. I didn't even know I had a package and uh, it was last evening and I was on the phone and I just wanted a minute of quiet and I went to sit on the front porch and next to me is a package and I'm sitting on the phone talking to this really cool wine guy that I'm going to introduce you guys to at some point. And, um, and all of a sudden I see this package and I'm like, open it up. And I'm like, I I'm trying to have a conversation and I'm like, I'm getting goosebumps and ready to cry while I'm sitting here talking to this guy. And I'm like, I should have waited. I should have waited. I shouldn't have opened it yet. But you know, that was, um, that was really cool. I'm going to post a picture of it. You know, I'm going to find some place to make those and maybe we'll put uh, you know, put cool recipes on them. That would be really cool. So anyway, um, okay. Over a month ago, changing the subject now, over a month ago, I showed you guys how to stick some toothpicks in a, you know, in a, in an avocado seed. And my stupid avocado seed sat and sat and sat and it didn't do anything. So I started two more. Cause I'm like, gosh, maybe this is a dead one. But that one that I didn't think was going to go, Look, it has now split in half. There's a seed. I mean, there's a there's a root coming out. And inside, you can't really see it very close. I don't want it to drip. Let me see. Inside, you can see a little bit of green. In There you go. In there. And that's the beginning of a stalk going up. And this is the root coming down. And it's funny because this root was like one piece and now it's splitting. It's like in, in it's two pieces, two little roots. And I'm going to leave it in here a little longer till the green sh shoots up. But I'm going to have a little avocado tree. Now, um, the um, avocado tree in this region probably will not grow any avocados. My mom grew a beautiful one. It had to be five feet taller. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was the whole corner of the room, like my little tree back there, but you know, it was an avocado tree. And it's real cool. It's kind of tall and skinny. It has these really pretty leaves, are really shiny, are really nice. So um, really just, and you know, it's just fun. I have it there, I kind of make sure. It's like my little, pl my little pet. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, um, since I was talking about the uh, Roseto effect, and again, these are fun projects to do with the kids and the family and just to watch it and to grow it and to have green in the house. You know, greenery in your house is supposed to be very good for you. It's oxygen, it's healthy, it's mood altering, just saying. So back to the Roseto effect, you know, it's funny because if you go try to find this book that I'm going to show you online, it's like, I don't know, hundreds um, but I have one and honestly, I don't know how I got one because, um, I must've got lucky and found one cheap because the, it's crazy. This book is called the power of clan. This is actually the study that was done about Rosetta, Pennsylvania. Um, you know, gosh, it's well, 50, 60, 60, 70 years ago. And it's, um, 60 years ago. And um, it's just crazy to think that these guys back then noticed that, you know, there's something to be said for our community, you know. Um, you know, the unique feature of the Rosetta, Pennsylvania community was its remarkably low death rate from heart attacks. 
This in spite of the fact that such risk factors as smoking, lack of exercise, high fat and cholesterol diets were found to be just as prevalent there as in nearby control towns. The family or Roseto's traditional family oriented social structure, however, differed vastly from that of neighboring towns where materialistic values were predominant and where the individual rather than the family was considered to be the unit of society. This is what Darina's Kitchen is trying to change. We are gonna get people back to the table. We are gonna remind people how important the family structure is. And you know, today family structure is different. It may or may not be mother, father, and two kids. It may be, you know, um, that you're not, that, that you're in a single family home or that you live with a bunch of roommates, you're in college. Whatever that unit is, needs to glue together. So whatever your family unit is, you know, you could be living, you know, with your grandparents or with an uncle or by yourself, whatever it is, it needs to be a unit within the home and the home within the community. You really need to be a part of that and live together and, and share, get, encourage you and your family and your kids to seek out your heritage. And I don't care if you're 100% Italian like me, or you're a quarter Greek and a quarter Polish, a quarter Irish and a quarter German, or whatever, seek out all your pieces and learn some of the traditions and the foods and bring them to your table. Because by bringing that food, that heritage to your table, you will bring your family to the table. And when you bring your family to the table, that's everything. That's where all of us, we all seek identity. And I really think that so much of our, you know, the, so many problems in this country are, are due to discrimination because we don't know each other. You see, we tried to push this melting pot. I've said this before and I'll repeat it again, but an antipasto platter is a way better thing to model ourselves after. I personally, I'm a nice burrata mozzarella, or maybe I'm a nice pezzo di prosciutto. I don't know, they're my two favorites. I don't know, they're all my favorites. But anyway, each piece all by itself shines on its own, but together when you put them on a platter, it's so beautiful. That's what America should be, a beautiful antipasto platter. So when I go to somebody's house and they're a different ethnicity and they show me their foods. It's awesome because they have pride in their heritage. I can respect and understand that because in our differences is how we're all alike. That's how we're alike because we all, if, if I'm being Italian as I am and I, I, I know my heritage and I know my faith and I'm tight with my family, this is what I share with people and, and people love it. I go to somebody else's house and I have a nice Chinese dinner and they're from China and they show me how these foods are prepared and how this is part of their culture and it shows all of their pieces and their unity. I respect that. But when I'm forced into smushing, I don't know, it, it just doesn't work as well. You have to know your pieces and it doesn't matter if you have different pieces. Because there's not a lot of people. I'm kind of unique being 100% and not being a, not being a, I just got here immigrant. Okay. And in the reality, in the grand scheme, nobody in the whole world is probably 100% of anything for the most part. <laughs> but I don't know. We, my sons did our DNA. We're like almost 100%. It's like by a percent off. And it's still in that same neighborhood. So, you know, some of us are, pure. no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, some of us are pure. Um, but, uh, it is really, really important to know who you are, where you're from, know your culture, bring it to your table and share it with other people. That's when we know things about other people, when it's not a mystery, all of a sudden it's not a threat. You see how things go? You know, people don't know you, so right away you're threatening. Get out of here, just be you and share it with people. Check out the power of clan. This is actually, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's a lot of, science-y kind of talk. So I kind of skip around, you know, but there was one piece I saved. Wait, let me see if I can. Oh, they were talking about the, the percentage 
of people, or actually they don't have percent, oh yes, the percentage of people, like, you know, living with the, um, you know, the same ethnicity as the spouse, same religion as the spouse, lived in the town their whole life, you know, all these interesting things, and the numbers were all really high. One I found was really interesting was, um, wait a minute, three generation households. It was like 69%. That is so cool. You know, I read an article a couple of years ago about uh, how um, multiple generations were kind of coming back together a little bit to help each other out. It was some article I read and it was like, you know, there was a family, so the husband and wife and the kids, and then the parents moved in with them and they had three generations under one roof. And when the parent had to go to work, the grandparent was there to watch a kid or blah, 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 this and that. The kids were there to help the grandparent. That's what life is all about. And if you go to any other country in the world, that is the norm. People are there. They live with or next door to or down the block from or in the same little neighborhood or whatever as their immediate family. And yes, sometimes it's a pain in the culo. And sometimes, more often than sometimes, it's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. So, you know... I think that, um, you know, if I could say that I would let my father live with me or my mother live with me, then, you know, anybody can do it. <laughs> Hope mom's watching. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's what family's for. I would never turn away anybody in my family. And I've had plenty of people live with me over the years. You know, sisters, cousins, um friends, you name it, my friends, kids' friends, husbands' friends, whatever, people who needed a stopover in their life. My house was always open. And of course, if it's my immediate family, it's going to be doubly open. And I don't know how you can be more open than open, but you know, that's the way it goes. And we just make do. And it's more fun that way. So, um, you know, life is about togetherness. Otherwise, what's the point? So I'm just checking the checking the computer here because I have um, a live video going and I want to see what questions you might be asking or putting on here. So let's see. So um, how about you guys? What uh, are your thoughts on all of this um, stuff going on in life right now? You know, I have to say I am going to bring something. Um, I'm going to bring something up that's kind of serious. I mean, all this has kind of sort of been serious today, but I can make it funny. And I don't have regular TV right now. We just have the, we just, we, we canned it all because we just stream, you know, and I have different um, shows I've been watching. Okay, before I get into my, my serious subject here, I do have to tell you, please, 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 if you have Netflix, um, and if you have Netflix, please watch um, Highway to Heaven. That's five seasons. And I have to tell you, so it's like so timely that that is on Netflix right now. It is so many of the topics of the episodes are so timely for right now. It's crazy. Absolutely our world today. And that is from the mid 80s. And I'm telling you, you got to watch it because it's like watching the future from then because some of the issues that they they talk about or that they go fix and help out being angels um are about now and there was one where they're fast forwarded to 19 wait no no they fast forwarded in this one episode close to the end to um 2018 and holy crap it was scary but it was cool and it's very, very timely that I really encourage everybody to watch the whole series. It's really worth it. Okay, so there. Um, but in the meantime, so since I don't really watch too much regular television, I'm not watching any news. But I do get the news highlights on my, on my phone. And I just read headlines. Because honestly, it depresses me. It makes me sad. It makes me want to cry. It makes me sit here and say, what are we doing this all for? And am I really going to make a difference in this world? Because that's just really all I want to do is I just want to make a little bit of a difference in this world. So right now, there's not that many people watching, but I hope a lot of people see this. 
I was just reading this morning. I actually read some of the article because a young lady that I know actually posted something. So I value her thoughts and I went to follow up and look and see what this is about. And these crimes against other people, against individuals, against an entire culture. Okay, um, I can't remember the names now, but the guy that just got hurt by the cop up in Minnesota. Um, the fact that a person can be that mean and stomp on somebody like that till they're dead, that is sick. And that person should not be for, I, I, well, I'm going to say this should not be forgiven, should, should definitely pay for it. It's up to God to do that kind of forgiving, but, or whatever, but judging, I guess I should say. And I truly believe that he shall be, that, that guy will be judged in the end, in the, in hopefully in the, in the right way, unless he turns his crap around really quickly. But for everybody else that's listening and for everybody that we know, that is so wrong. There is good and bad in every culture. Let me tell you, I know some really bad Italians. And look at the way they portray us on TV. That's horrible too, but that's another story. But there are people that are like that, those ones that they portray, those bad mafios, those bad gangsters, whatever. But we're not all gangsters. So should I, would I be happy if everybody treated me like I was a mob gangster? No. So the thing is, we cannot stereotype and sometimes stereotypes do abound for a reason. All Italian women are good cooks. Damn right. Okay. Darn right. I got to bleep that out. But not everybody is the same. We are all individual people. And you've got to get to know somebody before you think uh, anything about them. Because most of those people are just good people. And if they're not good people, there was a good person under there sometime because nobody's born bad. So if anybody's a parent here, it's up to you to raise a good kid. And kids, it's up to you to listen to your parents so that you become a good adult. There's so much that relies on all of us individually and as a community. That's why the Rosetto Effect was such a great thing to model our lives after. Community, family, understanding, love, got your back, take care of each other. You know, I have some great friends who are in law enforcement, wonderful people. I also have met and know some people that if, if, if I got pulled over from them, I'd be scared. And if I was African American, I'd be 100% scared. And if I was Middle Eastern or Greek or something looked like whatever, like I'm from somewhere else, I'd be scared. And if I was just a blonde, white, average American looking person, I'd still be scared because these people are jerks. And there are people who do take opportunities that are, um, when they're put in that some sort, some sort of power as a, a police officer can be, absolutely. There's always gonna be somebody who's gonna take advantage of that power. But then there are genuine people who are good people who just want to serve, who want to help people, who wanna keep people safe. Not all cops are bad. They're not all good, but they're not all bad. Just like not all Italians are gangsters and not all gangsters are Italian, but the Italian gangsters that are there, there, some of them are really bad. But you know what? We're not all gangsters. So I urge you to share, with, especially with our younger generation, share with them. And as they learn their own heritage, they realize how there's something special in each one, you know, I'm going to tell you, there's a movie called Soul Food. It's a favorite old movie of mine. Old. It's like from the, I think it's from the 80s. And, um, or 80s or 90s. Anyway, whatever it is, Soul Food is, could be my family with the grandmother and the kids and the, everybody around the table, but it's an African-American family. So when I look at that family and I look at my Italian family, I look at somebody else's family, you see when people know who they are and they have their traditions and values that bond them together as a family, it's all the same. We're all the same. 
We're all the same. Does anybody see in Soul Food? If you haven't, that's another one I recommend. Watch it. It's a great movie. And it is, could be an Italian family. Just more Southern Italian, I joke around with. Because <laughs> I am Southern Italian, baby. And that's the way we eat around the table. Now, all Italians do. But more so down South, I think we're a little bit more homey. So anyway, please do me a favor. Watch Soul Food. Watch Highway to Heaven. Eat together at the table. Keep following me because we're going places. We are going to revive the Rosetto Effect. Check out the Power of Clan. And after all is said and done, grow an avocado seed. <laughs> oh gosh, you know, heavy stuff has to be said. But I really much prefer light stuff. But you know what? We can't have the light stuff if we don't take care of the heavy stuff. So anyway, I'm going to end today a few minutes early. Please do me a favor. Make some pasta con ricotta dialect. Pasta con la ricotta. Um, hit the little like thing on my page, please, and like this post. I would really appreciate it. Let me know that you're watching. Um, and also, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have five more people to hit 600. I, I'm at 595. I'm on my way to a thousand, but you know, each, each hundred mark is an awesome, like, you know, moment. So please, if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll be really happy. I want to hit, I want to hit 600 today. That'd be so cool if I can just get five subscribers. So anyway, share it with a friend or something. Do me a favor, you know? So anyway, and go just be nice, you know, be nice to people and share, share the love. Make somebody that you wouldn't normally share something with. Give them a piece of cake today or something, a cookie. Zucchini muffin, some pasta with ricotta even. They can heat it up when they get home. Anyway, I love you guys. Be good, be kind to each other, and share the love with everybody you know because, you know, remember that old Joe Namath commercial with those like some shampoo thing or something? You know, and he told two people and so on and so on and so on. So do that. It's just, loves, you know, love, share, love spreads just as quick as hate does. So let's share love instead of hate. Okay. Mwah. Love you guys. Christine, you're the bomb chick. See y'all later. Ciao.